What's up guys, thanks for tuning in to another not so classic episode of Parkour Journeys. I'm happy to see you back. Today we've got another talking episode where I'm gonna dive deep on my journey with barefoot shoes, how I've come to use them over the last year. It was about a year ago this month that I started using barefoot shoes and started talking to you guys about them. And now I feel confident that I can really dive deep into the pros of barefoot shoes, the cons of barefoot shoes, the cons of regular shoes and yeah, um, not just give you like the science behind it, but also a deep dive on how it's affected my movement, what I do day to day and uh, me as a free runner, as an athlete, as a parkour athlete and how it can affect you and why you really, really, really need to know this information. So let's crack into it. I'm super excited to do this one. Let's go. <laughs> So this is gonna be a pretty deep dive on barefoot shoes. I'm gonna give you some of the science behind barefoot shoes, but not just from a clinical sort of perspective. I wanna to explain to you my journey, how it's affected my specific injury, which is patella tendonitis in my left knee, how it's come to help that, why shoes like regular shoes, normal shoes are not natural, normal is not natural, and what sort of uh, shoes you should be going for why it's so important to consider what is on your feet and why ignoring that could be could lead you to a lot of injury later down the line where i'm at with it now and how this can help you and what you really need to be considering when it comes to what you put on your feet and why it's so absolutely important so make sure you watch this whole video make sure you get all of the information make sure you really understand what it is that you're putting on your feet and why so I started introducing barefoot shoes into my lifestyle and into my training a year ago this month and I really wanted to wait to make this video um, after I'd had an extensive period of using the shoes so that I could give you a really comprehensive analysis of what it's done for me and what it's done for my body and what it can do for you. I've had patella tendonitis for about eight years and that's been a massive inhibitor to my training. As you know, I'm a parkour athlete and on this channel we usually do parkour journeys going around from town to town and meeting new people and learning to move in different ways, seeing what different towns does to our movement and different areas and things like that will take you along for the journey. So if you have just found this channel, that's what we usually go into and you should make sure that you subscribe so you don't lose us and go check out some of the other content on the on the channel because I really think you'll you'll enjoy it. If you've just stumbled across this channel and you don't really know what it's about, just go go have a look after you've got the information from this video because it's uh, we've got a really well-rounded channel and it's it's becoming really fully fledged and it's really exciting. So I'd love for you to for you to enjoy that. With patella tendonitis, I've been consistently looking for ways to improve my biomechanics and how I move and like just really dig in deep into what's making my body imbalanced and what is the problem with how I go about my day-to-day -day training regime and, and life. Taking a look at what's on my feet was something I hadn't really considered early on, but it started to make more and more sense to me as I was moving forward. Because it used to be, it's basically the idea that in parkour, for example, that you want a big, thick cushion to kind of protect your knees. If you're taking a big landing, for example, or a big height drop or a lot of impact, you think that you want that cushion to sort of protect and, and, and that kind of, in our minds that makes a lot of sense that that's gonna protect our joints, but it's actually not the case. I'm gonna to explain to you why. Quickly before I go into anything else, I'm gonna be letting you know what shoes that I wear, but this is not a sponsored video. We do work with a certain company who send us free shoes that do separate videos with us, but this is not sponsored. This is just exactly what the shoe that me, myself and Kieran and Chelsea, we've been using uh, for a while now, and it's the one that we found to be like the best for parkour, but that doesn't mean that this video is about that I just want to clarify that this is just my honest opinion on why you should be getting barefoot shoes. So this is roughly the kind of shoe that the average parkour athlete uses and uh, it's got like a lot of padding and it's got a big heel. It's just like a standard sort of parkour shoe. A lot of people do use thinner ones than these but I'll explain in a minute why that's not that's still not good enough you need to you need to go full barefoot but let me explain exactly what's wrong with something like a shoe like this right so basically you've got a lot of a lot of padding and it doesn't matter by the way if you're like just a runner or a regular athlete or even you're just looking at this for your day-to-day -day life 
but the idea is that being a free runner, I'm gonna be taking pretty much the most impact that you can take on a body in a sport that I know of at least. And so that's why it's uh, a bit more of a, an accurate representation of, of what a shoe is gonna to do to your body because you're putting it through the extremes. The first thing to notice about the padding is that it goes in a diagonal slope downwards, okay? So usually with almost every shoe, you have a much higher uphill than you do down at the bottom. Now, if you've got a platform that's raising your heel up and pointing your toe down to the ground, all that does when you bend bend yourself down is force lots of pressure up into your knee. Usually, when your heel is flat, you take a lot more of that pressure to the hamstrings and the glutes. But when you've got a platform that's raising it up, and you know this because specific tendon exercises are involve having an incline and making sure that you are going down, you can put yourself on an extreme incline and exaggerate this so that you can feel it. Squat down on an incline and see, watch how much pressure goes right into your knees. If you've got a barefoot shoe that's flat, and it keeps your heel down, then when you take impact and you do a jump, for example, or even when you're just doing a normal walk, that pressure isn't being put into your knee, it's being put as it's designed with your body into, into your heel and like it's spread across the foot and then it goes into the appropriate areas with your body. The whole point of barefoot shoes is to make it so that you are using your body in the most natural way. Your body is it, it's more intelligent than we are trying to fix it and trying to play God with our body. It's already designed to be working in the most efficient way. So trying to change our biomechanics and sort of hack the position that we're in, it's, it's like, it's kind of backward thinking. You want to be going to the most natural, natural ways of moving that you can because your body is equipped and ready to do that. Right, so my, my original intention for going to barefoot shoes was so that I would take a lot less impact. So I would naturally be taking less impact because the shoes are obviously thinner and that means that I would not be doing the bigger jumps that, that were hurting my knee. But while this was the original intention in the beginning, I began to see that I could eventually build up the strength in my foot to take those bigger bigger jumps, even with the barefoot shoes, but I was doing it with the proper biomechanics. So I wasn't taking a massive leap, going straight onto the, the ball of my foot and shoving all of my tension up into the knee, right? So the next thing you gotta look at is the way that the the toe is, uh, is pointed, right? So this is why it doesn't matter if you've got a, uh, if you're wearing like Vans, for example, because you've got that thin sole, it's not all about the thin sole. It's also about how much movement that you have for your for your toes to spread out, right? So if you look at your standard shoe, you've got a triangle that forces your toes into this narrow position. When in actuality, your toes, when you land, are supposed to spread out. Your whole foot is supposed to spread out and disperse the impact. It's the first point of contact to the floor. It's supposed to disperse the impact so that less of it drives straight up into your joints and into your knees and then affecting your knees and your back and your, your hips, sorry, and then your back and so on, right? So you've got to remember that the first point of contact is the most important part of the journey of impact that travels up your body, right? So when you've got something like Vans where yes, it's great that you've got a nice flat sole and that's a little bit better, but you've also got this horrible compact foot where you jump to it, all of that pressure goes into this little box, this little point, and then you've just, imagine like when you go onto a trampoline, right? If you've got your feet together and you attack it from the middle, you get a massive dip in the middle, whereas if you spread your feet out, you get less of a dip, there's less impact, right? So it's the same thing with, with a pointed toe. If you've got your toes coming to a point, then they're not gonna spread out and absorb that impact properly, spread it across your foot and allow it to travel up your body in a, in a more relaxed way. It's gonna go straight to your toe and then dive, and especially because of this raised heel, it's gonna dive straight into your knee and then go straight into your hips, your back. Wherever your problem place is, it's gonna attack it because, because your foot isn't doing the job that it's designed to do. So with the barefoot shoes, as you can see, they've got a nice wide, your foot fits into it really nicely. And then when you land, your, your foot has the room to disperse the energy like it's supposed to and your toes start to spread out. Our natural toe positioning is, is for our toes to be apart. They're supposed to be like this, right? But everyone's toes have been, because we've been wearing shoes since birth, shoved into this little box so they're not doing their job. They're not dispersing the impact when you touch the floor. So the next thing to look at is the fact that whatever shoe you have, 
you're gonna have some kind of foam in here, right? You're gonna have some kind of padding and specifically with shoes like this, I mean, these are just drastically padded. If you have a tendency to, for example, have your knees tilt in or your knees tilt out, when your knees tilt in, then imagine what happens down the chain. So say you've got a muscular imbalance that makes your knees tilt in. What does that do to your foot? It turns it like this to compensate for the knee. Now, what happens when you've been wearing a shoe for over a month, say, which most people do, no, not many people get new shoes after a month. You've got this cushion that slowly over time mimics and exacerbates that position of your foot. So before you know it, you're actually putting your foot into the position that it's already compensating for and you're, and you're making the problem worse because you're, you're not allowing your foot to go into the correct position and realign properly. It's already remembered in your shoe. So any work you do muscularly is immediately, immediately gonna go into a shoe that's facing the wrong way. And you're, the memory in the foam is gonna keep your problem persisting. Do you kind of get what I mean? So if you're in a shoe like this, where it doesn't have any mem uh, like foam to remember where your imbalances are, then it's just gonna be flat to the earth as it's supposed to be and you're not gonna exacerbate the problems, right? So if you look around, man, like if you're, if you're walking down the street, look at people from behind or, you know, <laughs> don't be weird about it, but like have a little look at people's legs. If they're like tilting outwards, for example, a lot of people, their foot will go like this and then you'll see them with their ankles and they'll be like this. They'll be like turned outwards and it will be, and you'll be able to see the, the wrong line all the way up. Now this is bad enough for walking, let alone running and let alone jumping. Like imagine jumping onto a foot that's like that, an ankle that's gonna push out that way, a knee that's gonna push out the same way, and then how that affects your knee, your hip, the whole chain up, it's all connected and you have to pay attention. The next problem with this, uh, this kind of shoe is that it weakens your foot overall. Now our feet are actually designed to be able to jump and run and like do everything that we can, as fast as we can, as high as we can. It's like as, as, as much as my muscles can take me, my, my foot is designed to be able to, to take that impact. When I first started training, I had to implement my barefoot shoes slowly. My original plan was just to do it in the warm up of a session rather than the whole session. And then I slowly realized that actually this is the way to go all of the time. The point being that I originally thought, oh man, I'll never be able to do my biggest jumps in the barefoot shoe because my foot just couldn't take it. But it turns out it's just that my foot had been weakened by shoes like this and it didn't have that arch support because I hadn't been spending my time barefoot. Now in only a year, I'm now able to do my full jump in barefoot shoes, like my absolute max jump in barefoot shoes. I can even take it to arches. Like if you're a free runner, you know, you're supposed to land on the balls of your feet. If you land on arches, especially in barefoot shoes, that absolutely kills and everyone knows that, especially if you've worn something like Feiyu's before, right? Now I can take my full jump to my arches, no pain, because I've built up that arch support. I've got a massive cushiony muscle now between my balls of my feet and my heel that strengthens my foot. But if you constantly use this crutch, then you're always gonna have a weak foot and you're never gonna be able to solve these problems. So, which is why we're on the barefoot shoes, right? Quick touch on fair use. A lot of people ask me, do, are fair use okay? Do they count as barefoot shoes? No, they don't. You've got to remember uh, what I was talking about with the Vans. They squish your feet, especially fair use, into a really, really tight point. Barefoot shoes have to be wide. They have to be able to spread your toes out. That's a big part of the equation. The final problem with shoes like this is that you don't have any information come up from the floor. This is difficult to explain, but imagine it's like your knees, your feet, your hips, your entire body adapts to what's underneath it based on the information that it receives from the floor. It's a relationship. When you step on a rock and it does that, then your ankle is gonna mold to that, which puts your knee into a different position, which puts your hip into a different position. But if you've got something like this and you can't feel that happening, then not only are you gonna weaken yourself by not becoming accustomed to different twists and turns and your ankles are just gonna get weaker, you're also not getting the accurate information from the floor. You've got this kind of padding that dulls the information and then your body doesn't understand how to respond. Does that make sense? So like when you've got a shoe like this and you're walking along, you can feel every twist and turn of the pavement. If you're walking along rocks, along grass, and you can feel every different different bump and, and stone, for example, but you feel it in the correct 
with the correct timing. With this, it's too, already too late before you've felt it because it's got to come through this foam and it comes through in a dulled way. With something like this, you immediately feel it and your body does its auto corrections all the way up your body and you strengthen that over time. Does that make sense? So it's a relationship. Your foot has a relationship with the floor. It gets information from what it's walking on and that allows your body mechanics to, to be in alignment with what you're walking on. Does that make sense? I recently just got back from a trip in the Lake District, right? And there's lots of peaks there to climb. Now you're walking along these different stones and rocks and it's all like this and jaggedy and you're kind of like walking up and down uh, in these different ways, right? And you see these walkers and they have these huge boots on that are designed, they've got ankle protection and they're like big thick soles and they're like using their walking sticks. It's so backward because the idea that they've got in their heads is I need to protect my ankles and I need enough padding so that I don't feel these rocks. All it's gonna do is make you weaker in the ankle, in the foot, and then eventually affect your knees and your hips. Do you kind of see what I'm saying here? But when you've got these, you've got the information coming up from the rocks. We were just running along the rocks and strengthening our ankles, strengthening every part of our bodies because we could feel the different crevices. We could feel the way the rocks were moving against our bodies. But you see these people in the walking boots, right? And it looks like, it looks like they were like low pixel resolution, like kind of glitching out across the floor, almost kind of like just, they were just walking across stones that were doing this, but with no, or as if they were trying to walk along flat pavement with no information coming up to their legs. And they're just, you just see them just going boom, boom, boom. And just, it, it looked like trying to put a square into a square peg into a round hole it didn't have the capacity to receive the information the ground was giving the body and it was a horrible sight to see and you just saw people with these knee braces on they all had to like walk with their sticks and like i can't believe they can even do it you know and their, their ankles are super weak because they've got this massive chunky support they've got this huge thick sole they can't feel anything coming up from the ground you wear these and all of a sudden you've got all of the information coming up from the ground. You may be a little bit weaker to start with and you have to build up to it and that's absolutely fine. But long term, I mean, I've been in these a year and now look, I can literally go anywhere. I can do my biggest jump. I can run across rocks. My ankles are strong as anything. My feet are strong as anything because I took the time to wear these in. You know, on this channel, I often talk about longevity in your training and in just in life and however, you know, in, in, in all kinds of movement, you're gonna be moving your whole life. It isn't just a short stint from when you're 17 to 21, you know what I mean? Where you've got this big time come up and that's like the only thing that you ever need to worry about. You'll hit 21 and you'll be like, oh, what do I do now for the rest of my life to make me happy? Sit behind a desk? It's not on. You need to be able to move your entire life and things like this is what enables that. You have to think about it. You have to make a little bit of a sacrifice and maybe not do your biggest jump just yet for a little bit of a time or just slowly start warming up in these, wearing them day to day and getting to the point where you can actually go for longer periods of time, go for longer walks and go for bigger jumps with these shoes. But once you've built it up, it's done. And then all of a sudden you've got that longevity. You're not, I don't get ankle thing anymore. When I do uh, land wrong, if you know what parkour is, you know the ankle thing, too, too far on the toes, your ankle pushes against your, towards your shin. I'm already prepared for that. The strength in my ankle is already there. Any kind of twist, turn, wobble, and I've been, I've been training against it the whole time I've been wearing these shoes. You see what I mean? So it's just, it's just about that longevity and it's about building up that strength that allows you to move in the correct way that your body was designed to in the first place. What else are you, what else are you doing? You know, why, why are you putting these fake foam gloves on your feet that just don't, don't allow you to feel where you're going at all and give your body any information? It doesn't make any sense. You need to wear a shoe that allows your body to move in the way that it normally moves. Now granted, you know, you can't, you can't just like be, it's difficult to do your biggest jumps and stuff just completely barefoot. There might be glass on the floor and things like that, which is why you still need some kind of a sole on underneath. But why not have it mimic as best as possible your natural foot? It just makes all the sense in the world. And obviously go barefoot as much as you can as well, because even doing that, it's it's like toughened my skin up massively and I can I can walk pretty much anywhere barefoot. I pretty much only wear shoes if I'm doing parkour these days or going on like a really, really long walk. So yeah, man, that's uh, that's where I'm at with this. And this is why yeah, I hope you're getting a feel for why you need to consider this and why it's so important to your training long term. So how long did it take me to implement the barefoot shoes? Well, I'm a year later now, so I'm at my full capacity a year in. But what I started off doing was 
warming up in my barefoot shoes for a session, maybe doing a few of the bare, like of the smaller jumps when I felt super warm, then I would transition into my normal shoes, which were the thick shoes, which is what I was used to training in at the time. My original thinking with this was just was wasn't that I was just going to build it up. It's just the the dots connected later on. But for me, it was. Uh, the idea was, okay, I'm going to teach my body the proper biomechanics and get it used to landing in the right ways and then I'm going to go into the thicker soled shoes. But then slowly but surely I started not taking my barefoot shoes off and doing entire sessions with them on. Maybe sort of three months in or so, I started getting to the point where I could train pretty much the whole session with barefoot shoes on. But then maybe if I was going to do some massive jump, some big Kong Pre, then I'd put the, the thicker soled shoes on. Um, now I've pretty much this summer has been my goal to conquer absolutely all of the bigger Kong Prix that I've done before with my big thick shoes and do them with the barefoot shoes because honestly man like putting big shoes on started to feel like cheating it's starting to feel it started to feel like just like everything was so easy but I could tell that the biomechanics was wrong I could start feeling that pressure going to my knee I could start feeling like that I wasn't I w like I would hit a rail and I'd be like man I actually don't know where my foot's really hitting that. You kind of also get this effect where, you know when if you're on a trampoline and you're not expecting the trampoline, you get like a shudder up your body. Thick foam can create that kind of effect and I started to feel that as I, as I transitioned into the barefoot shoes. These days, maybe even like nine months in to start with, um, I was starting to do my biggest jumps, my biggest precisions to rails, um, which for me was like, okay, I've pretty much got to the point now where I can wear barefoot shoes all the time. And I really, really doubt that I'll be going back to any kind of thick shoe in the future. So that's roughly what you can expect. I think you can do it in, in sooner than a year, but I do think there is an implement slowly type of thing. I strongly recommend that you just get a pair of these so that you can feel what it's like and sort of start even just doing your warm ups in them is gonna make such a difference for you. So just grab some sort of bare sh barefoot shoe and allow it to, to do its thing for you, man, because it's, it's, it's a real game changer. And everything I've said in this video, you can kind of understand why. But the implementation just comes. It comes slowly but surely, and before you know it, you'll be like, okay, I don't know why I'm not just wearing barefoot shoes all the time, and you just wear them, and now, and now I can wear them everywhere, and it's perfect. And when you go out and walk in the street, wear them as well. I know, like, they're not the best looking shoes in the world. I've actually got some nice ones to go out in now, and I've got some nice ones to train in that I don't mind the look of. It's get out of the vanity headset with this kind of thing. It's not, it's not about how you look. It's what it's doing to your body. And I'm sure that with more funding and more people going to the barefoot shoes uh, companies, they'll be able to develop better looking shoes. And it's not like they're even terrible now. I know then they're, they're just not as stylish as Vans. But please just just think of your body first. Stop like thinking of the vanity aspects first. I know it's difficult, I'm, you know, I, I get it. I know you want your movement to look nice and so you kind of want what you're wearing to look nice as well. I totally understand, I'm right there with you, but it's more important you're gonna be moving for years to come, not just, you know, uh, a few short periods of, year, you know, a few years, you know what I mean? And I get as well that you're like, ah, oh, you know, I'm just getting to this point, maybe you're 17 or whatever, and you're like, I'm doing my biggest jumps, I don't really wanna take a step backwards completely understand but you've got to un you've got to get that you're going to be taking that bloody step backwards whether you like it or not because your body's just going to go no i'm not designed to do this and this is why you see so many people just bang they're out you know apart from real anomalies you don't need most people get knee injuries with parkour and this is this is a massive way to prevent it and knee injuries back injuries this is literally one of the the main causes so just don't, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to people who may not listen just yet, but please just try and try and understand why I'm telling you this. It's because of my own experience and what I've gone through, the kind of, the kind of pain that I've gone through not being able to move. You know, I'm 26 now and I started getting knee pain when I was like 18, 19. And it's like, man, I wish I'd just known about this information then so that I could take that opportunity. And I know, like I say, it's hard when you're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be the best in the world at parkour and I can't afford to take a step backwards right now. But believe me, I'm the best I've ever been at parkour now on 26. I've had to go this massive roundabout way to get to that point. And if you just listen to some of the information I'm telling you, learn from my mistakes, you're gonna be so happy you did. And uh, I really, really hope that you do because um, it's gonna be the best thing for you, all right? Um, just quickly, the shoe I use, the shoe I've currently found to be the best one is the Freet 
flex. So if you go free footwear. So yeah, guys, I just really wanted to communicate that information with you. I really hope that you start considering barefoot shoes in whatever sport it is you do. And even in just in your regular life, just going barefoot because it's what we're naturally designed to do. We've somehow got into a social conditioning that wearing big thick shoes is what we're supposed to do and that's normal and that's good for you and that's the kind of running shoe you should have and that's what you should be wearing when you're out and about and it's just total crap, man. You need to think about your body first and whatever, you know, normal is not natural. Um, normal is often very bad for you. So just start, if anything, just start questioning what the hell is going on with you and what the hell is going on with your body and what have you bought hook line and sinker as normal and that's that, that you actually need to be questioning and stuff like this is is that so yeah i hope that that communicates some good information to you guys i hope you get a bit more of a new philosophy on how you should be treating your body and what you can do to prevent injury and what you can do to just take care of yourself and 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 put your body first because you are your body and that's what makes you happy like you, you are your body, you, you can't separate your mind from your body. Everything that makes you happy comes from your body and your mind and they're one thing. So look after it. You only have one. I'm not saying don't do things. You know, I do parkour. It's pretty much like as physical as you can get. Um, but that, you know, you only have one body. So, so take care of it, man. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Please do consider subscribing, guys, if you've just found this channel. I think it's well worth you subscribe because we do videos like this maybe once a month and the rest of the time we're out doing parkour and showing you how we're overcoming our fears. So if you have just found this channel, please do subscribe. Subscribe now. Don't forget. Don't miss out. Please subscribe. There's new videos every single Tuesday at 4.30. And I'm here for you for any questions you want to drop in the comments. I will answer any questions you have about the barefoot or just how to do things in general. And I'm here for you. So yeah, I hope you got a lot out of that, guys. Um, let me know if you're going to start wearing barefoot shoes. Um, big love. And I'll see you on the next one. Done. Yes. Woo. I've been wanting to do that one for a long time. So I'm stoked that we've got that done. Happy days. Oh.